right welcome back so we are back on the outcast 8s i've done a bunch of stuff off camera which is basically all four corners pulling out inner outer wheel bearings and uh, servicing them they were all stuck replaced out both rear drive axles because they were bent and while servicing all four corners I noticed a big issue with the bearings now it's nice and smooth uh, but they were they were they were stuck um, they were sticking not smooth so pulled them apart had to use PB blaster get them cleaned it was actually a lot to get these bearings back free and working smooth and because of that I'm now going to take a look at the inner uh, diffs. The rear diff is, is pretty soft. Front diff feels really good, um, but the rear diff is pretty open. And it, and it could be the way I set it up because I, I'm knowing to do that. Leave the rear pretty open just so it drives straight. And then make the front tires drive harder along with the center diff, stiffen that up. And the center diff uh, feels good. So I'm going to pop out this rear diff and we're going to take a look at these bearings. I'm probably going to have to do the same on the front diff and possibly, I think on the center diff, we already serviced those bearings. But on the center, center drive shafts, those bearings are definitely going to need to be serviced we'll take a look and see how the diff the pinion bearing is but i'm pretty sure that uh all the bearings are are just in bad shape on this rc and it could be contributing to some of the issues i'm, I'm having so First thing I want to do, get this rear diff cover off. The great thing about Armas is the diffs are usually relatively easy to service. one shim and the bearings feel horrible so this is pretty open we're going to pull the diff apart see what kind of fluid is in there all right well, let's pop this thing open unlike Traxxas with the diff cups you can go from the center here and change out the diff cups on the armas you have to uh take them apart pretty loose and it is dry on the inside of this diff that's why it feels real open I don't 
I think I just added grease to this one. As you can see, real dry. don't know what those are those feel like grub screws but they're not Got to take out one of these grub screws. These bearings have never been serviced. Oh, there we go. That's what's broken. There's supposed to be four pins up here. And they have broken. Alignment pins. Have broken. I explained how much there's the o-ring and the shim for that there's the bearing there's the outer shim I'm gonna get this diff cup off it's got the stars for the limited slip but no limited slip let's get that out bearing in the shim with that gear and then we gotta get this out Hopefully it's not too frozen on there. Alright. Gotta love diffs. We gotta get all this stuff cleaned up. best I can that one's not too bad this one's terrible So on these seals, see this silver line? 
that faces in. That's where the bearing retainer is rubbing on the seal. So I tend to put those back the same way. Now we got to get these bearings freed up. You can see how they're not too dirty on the inside, but watch when I clean them. Check for wear on our diff cups. And as you can see, they're getting pretty sharp. And I believe that's what's breaking the pins on the axles. And you can see all the dirt on the inside that packs in there. So grab some PB Blaster. We're going to get these bearings cleaned is the first thing. side up so all the fluid and dirt goes to one side you can see let's get some more fluid in there so all I'm going to do hold the center we're going to spin it in the fluid. free that's our goal and you can see the dirt is still in this bearing This is just the cleaning process I do. So they sound smooth with no grit. chunks coming out of this thing.
go nice and smooth no grit feel That one's a lot smoother. That one's pretty good too. I can still feel some grit in there. No more grit coming out. We'll let this settle and I'll show you how much dirt was in that bearing. Or all this uh, PB blaster out of here because it will uh, break down the fluid. Because it's a penetrating liquid like WD 40, and that's why you don't use WD 40 not in your bearings, is because it literally will clean off the grease on the bearings. And, uh, we're not trying to put oil in them for speed runs. We're trying to do grease for longevity, just like you would do on your car. You can see how black and dirty that is. And we're gonna get our seals in here, get our seals cleaned up. We did already wipe the seals. They're going to be way smoother than they were before. this bearing so wipe it and then push it you can do it in your palm too this is just a easier way since the bearing so small trying to push it past the cage and into the bearings it's just not a coating on the outside <clears throat> you physically want to make a pile and then push it in several times on one spot try to get the grease into the bearing not just on the surface so as you can see it starts to push out on the other side you can see we have all this that needs to push through see it pushing through the bearing once you do that we're going to flip it over we're just going to coat the other side you don't need to force it in on the other side you're only packing it one direction 
we're just making sure that there's grease on both sides see it pushed all the way through to the other side nice and smooth now we're going to get our seals back on remember the silver line goes down just try to keep it rubbing on the same side of the bearing you can see the silver line the other side is all black that silver line needs to go in towards the bearing case and you feel it click in and you push it down feel it pop in wipe our bearings off alright so bearings and brand new you can see the mark on this bearing where it's just not wasn't it was sliding in there a little bit got some heat and some discoloration to it but now the bearings are quiet and smooth literally perfect Perfect. No shim. Nice and perfect. Now we got to get the seal. in there or the shim but difficult make sure your seal is all the way in your shim Kind of helps that seal. You gotta make sure you gotta push down, make sure you get it even. You're gonna stick your sun gear in. Make sure the sun gear pushes all the way down. We're gonna do the same to the other side. This one's easier to see.
sun gear flat. And we'll get our spider gears in here. Get our grub screw put back in. Now we get some fluid in it. 47.5. So I'm going to mix in some 20 million. would be better Much stiffer. Still on the lighter side. Just because we mixed in the 47.5, thins it out a little bit, which that's what I'm going for. Get the shim cleaned up because the shim goes on this side. 
and we're going to check our pinion bearing. We'll be right back. All right, we're going to throw the diff back in. Just everything is in the way. Shocks in the way. better <clears throat> so I've got uh, I've got like I want to say eight hours into this thing just servicing bearings and uh, it's just uh, never-ending 
but uh, front is uh, about the same. Remove the RC Guy Garage uh, bumper support. Um, take out the same four bolts, pop it out. Basically the same thing uh, to do the front diff. I won't need to open up the diff because it feels pretty good. But uh, bearings are feeling pretty good. These bearings are actually feeling not bad. The back felt terrible. Uh, the back does feel a little stiffer now. But I'm going to go ahead and service that up. And then electronics. And then this thing is ready. Um, not only am I $800 into parts on this thing. But I'm literally um, about two days into uh, rebuilding and refreshing this RC. Seems like there was a lot of issues uh, with, as you know, bent chassis. Um, is, one is, were broke off. Still haven't done the battery trays, but then I noticed all the bearings were in really bad shape. Which, when your bearings are in bad shape, it's creating a lot of resistance on driving this RC. So, on top of pivot balls being bent, and we still do have the upgraded ones that we will be throwing in here. The EXB version, which are solid now. Um, the other, the other EXB uh, pivot balls are in are in now, and two more axles that I ordered. And the reason I'm doing that is because these parts that are on here have to go back on my Creighton. So I don't want to just keep stealing the parts. I got to replace them because I want to keep that Creighton and get that Creighton put back together. But there we go. Um, just a little bit of an update showing you what I'm doing. Trying to get this EXB Creighton or EXB Outcast, I don't know why I called it a Creighton. Getting my EXB Outcast all in tip top work in order so that I don't have to deal with it all summer long. Hopefully this will be it for the repairs and uh, we just won't be sending it as hard as I've been sending it. I'm still gonna run it like I run any of my other RCs. I am gonna jump it, um, but the plan is this summer, hopefully with all these repairs, I'll be able to uh, to last all summer without uh, breaking stuff. As you can see, even broken pins that I have. I use low C pins, hinge pins. Um, they give you the small and the big sizes. The small size is up here. And then we gotta fix my X-Max, so Upper bulkhead's broken on that. I need to make a pin. way off line there.
so I'll be doing that in the next episode I got to get the X Max and this Outcast finally up and running hopefully I can finish this thing throughout the week and we can go out running next weekend but there we go that's going to end this video like comment subscribe we'll catch you on the next video thanks for watching Oh, <laughs>